Is fat helpful for satiety? Is it a satiating macronutrient that can help you reduce your hunger and reduce your calorie intake for the day? Well, no and yes. Sort of an interesting question with an interesting answer. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this is a really important question. We've done videos on how protein is a very satiating macronutrient, and one of the I guess you could say criticisms about saying it is, is the question of saying, what is the background diet? Does that hold up for low carb or ketogenic diets? And it sure, it still has a beneficial effect. Um, question is, is it less an effect? And the same question holds for fat. When you look at the science, a lot of the science around satiety for fat or carbs shows that either carbs are more satiating or that they're about the same but none of those control for baseline diet. So let me read a couple things for you. Fat, not carbohydrate, is the macronutrient associated with overeating and obesity. Boy, that's an interesting statement in and of itself. Oof, I don't even wanna get into that one, but that's problematic as a statement. But here's what they say. When given in equal volumes, carbohydrate and fat have similar effects on hunger, satiety, and subsequent food intake. When infused intragastrically, which is probably not the best way to do it, or ingested in foods by normal weight, unrestrained young men. Okay, so ingested in normal foods, that's important. In obese and restrained subjects, preloads of high carbohydrate yogurts suppress subsequent food intake more than do high fat yogurts, indicating a relative insensitivity to the satiety value of fat. Okay, so that's one scientific publication saying that basically their you know, carbs and fats can be about the same, but in, in obese populations, it could be that carbs are even more satiating than fats. But again, what is the baseline diet? And all in, the, in these studies, it's a high carb, high fat diet, just with varying degrees of high carb and high fat. None of this is in low carb diets. And here's, let me bring up another one. Short-term studies investigating satiety after meals varying in fat to carbohydrate ratios have been inconsistent. Meals with a high fat to carbohydrate ratio either show a weaker suppression of hunger or have the same effect compared to meals with a low fat to carbohydrate ratio. But again, these are all with varying degrees of high fat, high carb. Now, Anybody who's gone low carb is probably shaking their screen right now and saying, how could I be saying such things? Because all you need to do is go on a ketogenic diet for a few days and eat higher fat, usually also higher protein meals, and just be so full that you don't wanna eat your next meal. That all of a sudden, instead of snacking six times a day or eating six times a day, you're eating twice a day and not even thinking about it because you're so satiated. So how could fat not be a satiating macronutrient? And the answer is, well, it is, it clearly is. Now the question is why? It provides a lot of calories, nine calories per gram of food as opposed to four calories per gram of food for carbs and for protein. So calories in and of themselves are satiating. But is there also something about the fat itself that's satiating? Yeah, there, there certainly is, and there probably is. Um, the question is when you're trying to talk about satiety per calorie, that's where it gets a little more confusing. Are you better off lowering your fat for satiety per calorie? Your mileage may vary, right? Everybody's different, everybody's individual. And unfortunately, we can't fall back on much science when you're talking about low carb diets. But what we can say, when we look at someone transitioning from a higher carb diet to a very low carb or a ketogenic diet, their protein percentage goes up, their fat percentage definitely goes up, their absolute amount of protein goes up, the absolute amount of fat may or may not go up that much. There, as we've said before at Diet Doctor, some studies show when you're transitioning from a standard American diet with plenty of fat from you know baked goods and ice creams and sweets and cakes and whatever, and then you transfer to a, a ketogenic diet, your absolute amount of fat that you eat may go up five or 10 grams. It's just from a completely different subset of foods. Um, so it's not all that much higher fat, but yet the diet is much more satiating. And those who do increase their fat also tend to find um, the diet more satiating. So it's a combination of reducing the carbs, increasing the protein, increasing the fat that clearly is a very satiating diet. But can we then say that fat is a satiating macronutrient? Well, that dietary context, that dietary mix is a very satiating um, uh, diet, right? So that combination is very satiating. So it works, it works for many people. 
Does it work for everybody? Well, no, right? Nothing works for everybody. And that's a problem we fall into with nutrition science and nutrition recommendations, thinking that we can make one recommendation that's going to work for everybody. That is just a disaster waiting to happen. And actually, I shouldn't say waiting to happen. That is a disaster that has happened for the past 50 years by saying everybody's got to eat low fat, low salt, and that is the diet for everybody. Clearly, it didn't work. Just look at our obesity rates and our type 2 diabetes rates. Again, not that that means um, if you follow the guidelines to the letter that this would have happened, but nobody can follow those guidelines. That's what we learned. What can we say about fat being a satiating macronutrient? Well, it's clear within the context of low carb and keto diets, the combination of reducing your carbs, increasing your fat, increasing your protein is very satiating. If you're eating a high fat, high carb diet, adding more fat is probably not the right answer to improve your satiety. And here's the other thing. If you're following a low carb or keto diet and you're finding you're not reaching your health goals, either your weight loss goals, your metabolic health goals, you're not seeing the progress you want to see, one option is reducing your fat. And a keto diet doesn't have to be 80% fat. It could be 60% fat and you're still going to be in ketosis and that is not a low fat diet. That is clearly an, an option for those people who are not succeeding the way they would like with ketogenic diets. But if you're eating a higher fat ketogenic diet, and you're hitting all your healthy weight loss goals, your metabolic health is improving, you're feeling great, then it's hard to find find any argument against that and any argument that for you, fat is satiating and working well. So I wish I had a study I could point to in a, you know, a low carb setting that clearly controls for the different macronutrients um, that can prove how satiating fat is versus protein. But what we can say is that combination, I'll say it again, the low carb, higher protein, higher fat combination, when you're, especially when you're in ketosis, is satiating and tends to work for a lot of people. So hopefully this was a little helpful to help give you a, a sort of thought process of what the science is, what the limitations of the science are for fat as a satiating hormone, or a satiating macronutrient and its effect on satiety hormones with the problem being they don't control for the baseline diet. So we have to sort of go by clinical experience and the studies that look at ketogenic diets and show that they are indeed satiating diets. But if they aren't for you, then we have an option of eating a higher satiety version of a low carb diet. So all those are options. You gotta find the thing that's right for you. We're here at Diet Doctor to help you along the way, to help you try and figure out how to gauge what's working for you and then how to decide what to transition to that may work. So check us out at dietdoctor.com. We've got tons of information on higher satiety eating um, and lots of information about ketogenic and low carb diets as well to get you started in a safe and effective way. All right, thanks a lot everybody. We'll see you here next time, Diet Doctor News on YouTube.